All right, folks, so today we're gonna solve a double integrals problem. Uh, hopefully that'll give you some Calc 3 practice. And um, I'm, uh, I'm heading over to my lab. I'm driving over in our Tesla. So uh, in the meantime, get your pens, papers, uh, and notebooks ready so you can solve the problem along with me. If you have a tea or coffee, uh, you can also go ahead and grab that. <laughs> Alright folks, let's check out a double integrals problem. So first, we have to understand what double integrals actually are. Okay, so what are double integrals? First, we gotta understand what single integrals are. Remember, single integrals look like this. The integral from a to b of a certain function with respect to a certain variable. So what is this integral answering the question to? The question is as follows. If you have a function f of x, what is the area of this function? from a certain interval a to b, right? So what is this area? This area is given by this integral. And this integral is really, all it is is just a Riemann sum, right? It's just a Riemann sum of what? Well, what we're really doing here is we're taking very small rectangular slices. And each of these rectangular slices has an area. Remember, area is base times height. So what's the area of one of these rectangles going to be? It's going to be base times height. Right? And so now this is going to give us a really bad approximation. So we don't just want one of these rectangles or two or three or four. We want an infinite number of these rectangles. That's why we're going to take the limit of this Riemann sum, the limit as the number of rectangles approaches infinity. So as you have an infinite number of rectangles, your approximation is going to get infinitely precise and eventually it's going to equal the exact area under this function. So that's the idea for a single integral. Now we're going to level up to double integrals. What is double integrals really saying? So double integrals look like this. Okay, obviously you have a double integral and you're going to have not f of x, you're going to have not a 2D function but a 3D function. So your function is not going to look like this. It's going to have two inputs, right? So it's not going to be f of x, it's going to be f of x comma y. And now you can do integration with respect to y first and then x, or with respect to x first and then y. It will give you the same answer. The answer will be symmetric as long as your region, your region is rectangular. And that's given by Fubini's theorem. Uh, but we're, we'll check that out later. So you can uh, switch around the integration uh, with respect to dy dx or dx dy. It's, it's going to give you the same thing. So what is the idea behind double integrals? What's the picture you should have in your mind? Well, here's how you should think of it. First of all, let's draw a 3D coordinate plane. And let's say we have a function. But our function is going to be 3D, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to look something like this. This is just an arbitrary function. Let's call it f of x comma y. And what's our question? Our question is, what is the area, what is the volume of this function over this region R, right? What is the volume of our, of our function over this region R? So to answer that question, what we're gonna do is we're gonna extrude our, our region R until it hits our surface F. So let's extrude it, let's extrude this, let's extrude this, and let's extrude this. And so what you're gonna end up with is something something that looks like this, right? And so the double integral, this double integral is gonna give us this volume, this volume under our function and over this region. Okay, so that's what the double integral is all about. Now, let's take a look at another way to see double integrals. Okay, so let me draw our x, y, z, okay? x, y, and z, and let's draw our function. So here's our function, and what is this double integral thing really doing? What it's doing is it's taking slices, right? So if you look carefully at the double integral, f of x, y, dy, dx, what you're going to notice is it's made out of two single integrals, right? 
If you look inside, what's inside the double integral, open up the box, you're going to find a single integral. So what is this single integral really doing? It's holding one of the variables constant, right? So what, what does that look like in a picture? What, what it looks like is you're taking a slice. You're taking a slice at a certain value of one of the variables, and you're slicing up your function. So you're slicing up your function at a particular value of x or a particular value of y. And when you slice up your function, what do you get? You're going to get a curve on the surface of your function, and this curve is going to create a certain area underneath it. Right? It's going to create this area. And using this single integral, you can compute what this area is. Once you find that area, you're going to move this constant value of x around. You're going to move it around until you get all the areas, right? So you're going to move this around just to, just to get this picture clear in your head. Move this surface around until you get more and more 2D functions. And you get more and more areas. Add up all the areas, and you're going to get the double integral. Okay? So those are two different ways to think about the double integral. As a volume under the function and over the region and as adding up many many areas okay so now let's go ahead and tackle our problem so our problem is as follows find the double integral of this function over the region r where r is the following r is uh, x and y such that x is between 0 and 2 and y is between 1 and 2. Okay, so this is our problem. We have to find the double integral of this function over this region where the region looks like this. So the first thing you always want to do is understand what the region looks like. So we're going to draw a picture of the region in yellow. Uh, here is our region. We're going to have x and y. x is between 0 and 2 and y is between 1 and 2. So x is going to be between these guys and y is going to be between these guys and we're going to end up with this rectangular region on the xy plane. This is our r, our region that we're integrating over. This is our r. Okay, so now you have an idea of what r is. Now we can go ahead and integrate. So let's go ahead and integrate in, uh, in green. So, you can integrate with respect to y first and then x, or with respect to x first and then y. doesn't matter. So, let's do x and, uh, and then y. So, or y and then x, it really doesn't matter. But uh, let's say you choose to do dx dy. So, what is our function? It's x minus 3y squared. What are the limits of integration for x? From 0 to 2. For y, from 1 to 2. Now, let's go ahead and uh, flesh this out. So integrate this with respect to x, what are you going to get? Well, this is going to become, by the inverse power rule, x squared over 2, and this is going to have an x attached to it. Okay, and now don't forget that you're integrating this from x equals 0, x equals 0 to x equals 2, and uh, we have a new audience member. So let's go ahead and solve this out for x equals 2 to x equals 0. So what are you going to get? You're going to get half of 2 squared minus 3y three squ three squared times 2. And if you plug in x is 0, it's just going to give you 0. So don't, don't think about it. Um, and don't forget you have another integral outside with respect to y. So what is half of 4? That's going to just be 2. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6. So 6y squared dy from 1 to 2. And uh, unfortunately, we've let's finish our problem here, maybe. Um, so what we're going to have is, if you take the integral with respect to y, we'll get 2y minus a third 6y cubed from y is 1 to 2, right? So let's go ahead and uh, evaluate this. This is going to become 2. So I'm going to have uh, 2 times 2 minus 2 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 1 minus 2 times 1 cubed. OK, now let's evaluate this and see what we get. I'm going to take my red marker because we're almost done. 2 times 2 is 4. 
Uh, 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. This whole thing is 0. 4 minus 16, that's going to give us a final answer of minus 12. Now, before you click away and say this is a scam, minus 12 cannot be a volume because it's negative. Remember that this function is below the xy plane. If you plot out this function, it's going to look something like something like this. So when we get minus 12, we are getting the volume, but it's under the xy plane. That's why it's negative. So if you take the absolute value, you'll get the actual volume, which is positive 12. All right, folks, thanks for watching this episode of Calculus 3. We'll check you out in the next one. Embedded plus MKO plus scaffolding equals learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.